Uh, my name is Matt Noikos. I enjoy making cellos a lot, I would say. Um, I, I do enjoy violins too. I think it uh, it gets the, the violin is, um, uh, because it's smaller, I think it's, it's, it's very focused. So you have to, um, you have to kind of fine tune your ideas because it's, it's, it's within a, a smaller framework. So it's just kind of like focusing all your efforts. It would be the, the equivalent, I think, of a composer composing a piece for um, maybe orchestra versus string quartet. Some of the best string quart some of the best music is by different composers is written for string quartet because they had to kind of focus all their ideas into four parts. Uh, so I would say maybe violin making would be maybe in the same kind of idea because it's all it's all very small and you have to. Every little tiny de deviation from a line will make a big difference. So, making an instrument, uh, you would start with a pattern that you that you want to to use. Either it's a copy of something else, or of a famous instrument, or 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 a copy of an instrument that you've had in the shop that you've taken measurements of. Um, and so you would make a template from that, uh, or or it's or it's of your own design. You can, if you want to change certain shapes and you want to move a line in different directions, and you can do that. But but you make a template, and use that template to make a mold. And the mold is basically what you build the violin around. Kevin Flannery. I'm, I'm the principal partner in this and the source of uh, the funding and uh, I play bass in the Grand Rapids Symphony and this is my 39th season. Um, I have been making and repairing basses for about 39 of those years. I'd like now to talk about uh, the hand tools that are being used in uh, violin making. Um, it seems like most woodworking now has gone to machines and uh, primarily computer numerically controlled machines. So if you're computer literate, you can make a machine do it. Of course, they're also very expensive and they're not very flexible. Um, one of the primary tools used in, in hand woodworking is called a plane. And in a plane, you have a blade, which is this silver thing, and you can see the sharp part of it right there, and you have a body with handles on it and adjustment, various adjustment mechanisms so you can control how much the blade comes out of the body and um, how, how much resistance there is, because the farther the blade is out of the body, the more muscle it takes to push it. And violin making planes go from the ridiculous, which is what this is right here, to the sublime. Um, this is called a jointer plane, and if you have a large piece of wood and you want to make it flat, you run it over a jointer. Well, this is the way it used to be done in the old days. I would say maybe the sensory experience of it. Um, I love 
I love that this this um, engages all my senses. So I come into a shop, and even even kind of the the um, gross smell of hide glue I like. <laughs> like it has uh, there's a certain smell to everything. Like the wood has a scent to it. Um, the varnish materials have a scent to it. Uh, every time I open that cabinet and I have with all the varnish supplies in it, it, it has this wonderful smell to it. Um, lavender oil, spike oil, um, I use for different things to thin varnish out. It, it smells amazing. Um, so I think those kinds of things, I'm, I'm just talking about smells it seems like, but um, so there's that, the visual aspect. Um, some of these instruments are beautiful, especially the way that the varnish plays. If somebody really gets the varnish right, it can have this gorgeous look to it where the where the light kind of bounces off the wood and I so it engages my eyes there's some there's some, there's always these beautiful things to look at and and violins themselves like the shape um, it has, it's a very pleasing shape it's very a classical design to it um, and obviously the auditory um, aspect of it too I mean I love hearing hearing the instruments played um, I love having customers come in uh, you know we'll have some uh, excellent players come in and, and play and it's just uh, I just love having every every bit of that even even hearing the way that the, when I'm carving something hearing the way that the wood because there's so many things I can get information wise that's why I don't wear headphones a lot of people just there's there, there are people who wear headphones and work and I don't because when I'm carving a, a top or or doing something like I can tell how my planes working by just how the how the wood comes off of the off of the blade and how how sharp the blade is, I can hear it, and it has a certain sound to it when it's working right. Uh, and I, I get a lot of information from from carving something and, and, and the way it's the way the chips are coming off. And um, but I love that. I love hearing all of those sounds. Uh, so I think the sensory experience and the feeling. There's there's so many things to you know the, the touch of the instruments and the, there's there's so much to take in. And I I think every aspect of this. Of, of that I like.